Good evening, everyone. Welcome to part five of this Arch Linux tutorial series. In the last video, I went over how to install and use the command line browser Lynx, how to manually download and install packages from the Arch user repository, or AUR, using a combination of Lynx, tar, make package, and pacman. And I concluded with showing one method to install AUR packages using Yaourt. If for some reason you made it here without knowing any of the above, please hit the link below to browse this playlist. One of the beauties of Linux is that you can install and use all sorts of different desktop environments, or DEs. So I'm also planning to show some of these uh, GUIs in the coming weeks. It's common to have two or more installed on any given distribution of Linux. In this video, I'll be covering the basic components required to install any GUI that you decide to use. I have a few requests to install Awesome, so that is what I will be doing today, but the fundamental steps are the same. And we'll start with actually configuring Awesome in the following video. So Awesome is a very different desktop experience than what most users are familiar with. It's known as a tiling window manager, meaning that Awesome tries to manage windows based on the tiling template that you've got active on a given workspace. So instead of having a bunch of windows floating around, though you can do this in Awesome if you wish, each window takes up a certain part of the screen, making for a very efficient use of what screen space you have available. Regardless, we're going to begin by changing our default command line editor. This will come in handy later. So what we're going to do is sudo nano and hit our bash rc file once again. And we're going to add a couple lines here. I'm going to scroll down to above alias. And I'm going to add export editor in capital letters equal sign quotation marks nano close quotation. And down here at the very bottom I'm going to add archie. What this is saying is make the default command line editor nano, and at the very bottom I added Archie, so each time I open a terminal window, Archie is going to appear. I just think it's very nice, completely optional, but there you go, that's how to do it. So we're going to hit Control x to exit, Y to save, and to quit. So now if I restart bash, you're going to see that Archie runs automatically. So let's update Pac-Man by using the capital S, Y, and U switch. This is going to update all the, the repositories as well as update packages with the latest builds. Alright, now that that's done, I'm going to perform a completely optional step here, and I'm going to download and install a different AUR uh, package downloader and installer called Pack Packer. So to do this, you're going to run Yaourt, and then whatever it is that you want to install. In this case, I'm going to choose Packer, or Pack Hour, and it's going to be number one, so I'm going to hit enter here. So one of the benefits that PackR has over Yaourt is that it allows you to edit all your package builds before it actually starts the installation process. Uh, if you install a bunch of programs, or want to install a bunch of programs like this, sequentially like that, uh, Yaourt makes you modify the package builds before each and every single installation, or each and every package, which is kind of annoying. What Packer does, it allows you to do that before everything's downloaded. So now that we have Packer, um, we can grab a video driver, though these are most of them are located within the official repositories to my knowledge, but anyway, you need to first find out what video card you have in your system. So to do this, we're going to use the LSPCI command. Now normally this lists all the TI devices you have installed on your system. However, normally this list is not this short. So if you're doing a live build, it's very likely that this list is a lot longer. 
So in order to filter our results, we can use something called grep. So we're going to do lspci with a pipe, and we're going to redirect the output of command to grep, and we're going to filter it using the VGA in all caps. And this will just display our video card this isn't a virtual machine, we have the VirtualBox graphics adapter, but if you're on a live build, you could either have an Intel video card, ATI video card, or an NVIDIA card. And this is very important because depending on which card you have, you have to download a certain driver. I'm going to leave a link down below to the ArchWiki in which it lists all the different video card drivers depending on the video card you have installed on your system. But since we have a generic video card, we're just going to use generic drivers. So to download this, we're going to use Pac-Man with capital S. And we're going to download uh, F86-video-visa. Oops. So let's install some sound utilities here. I'm going to start using Packer now. And we're going to download also utils, uh, so plugins, and PN mixer. Also utils and also plugins are located in official repositories, so you could use Pacman and download them, but PN mixer is not. Uh, like Yower, Packer checks the official repositories first, so it will download first two programs using uh, the official repositories, but. PN Mixer is located in the AUR. Anyway, uh, PN Mixer is a program that allows you to have a status icon in your status bar to modify the volume. Now, why I like PN Mixer is, it be is because it allows me to set custom keys to control the volume and mute. This is especially handy in the laptop. Sometimes the function keys are not recognized right off generic installation, so having PN Mixer allow you to set your function keys to control the volume is incredibly handy. So I will be using that here. There are many, many other options. You could simply get away with also utils. That includes uh, also mixer, which is a command line volume control, but you wouldn't be able to use function keys. Anyway, we're going to hit enter to install these. Alright, so now let's install the X Window Manager. If you're going to be using a graphical user interface in your Arch installation, chances are it's going to require this. So let's Pac-Man, capital S, and we're going to start with Zorg Server, Xorg, Xinit, Xorg Server Utils. Xorg TWM, Xorg Xclock, and Xterm. All right, so once it's done, you can use the command start x to test that this installation completed successfully. And now you'll see a graphical user interface. So recall that since I edited bash rc to start the Archie thing, every terminal window now is going to have it. So in order to exit out of the test environment, you're going to go to the leftmost and type exit, and hit enter to return to the prompt. All right, so once you're here, you have your big decision to make. I'm going to leave a link below to a page of the Arch Wiki discussing all the different desktop environments and login managers available to you that you can run on your system. Um, there are all sorts of different kinds, all sorts, so definitely check it out and see which one you'd like to try. Now, there are different login managers as well. These pop up when you first start your system, displays your user, select your user, type in your password, and then it loads your desktop environment. A lot of options here as well. You have KDM, GDM, uh, Slim. So I'll leave another link below so you can check that out as well. Personally, I don't like using a login manager. I like logging in from the TTY here. 
and then starting the graphical user interface using Start X. So, as I said before, I'm going to be using Awesome on this machine. In order to get Awesome, we're going to use Pac-Man, capital S, and we're going to get Awesome. And before we hit Enter, we're also going to add Fe. Fe is a background wallpaper manager that Awesome uses. Can I hit Enter? Ugh. Don't forget to sudo it. <laughs> There we go. And it's just that simple. Alright, so in order to start your new newly downloaded desktop environment, you can use the start x command. But if we were to run it now, we would just start the test environment once again. Now that we've already verified that x works, we don't really want that. So, in order to modify how StartX behaves, we have to modify a file called xinitrc. Now, we need to copy it from a specific directory over to our home directory so that StartX may actually use it. So, we're going to go to Etsy, scale.xinitrc, and we're going to copy it to our home directory. So now if we do an ls with the a switch on our home directory, you see that that xinitrc file is in there. So let's check it out with nano, sudo nano xinitrc. So from here, from the template, you can see commented out are different uh, desktop environments that can be run. So we have GNOME, we have KDE, we have XF. CE4. But since ours is not listed here, we're just simply going to add a new line, type XEC, and awesome. Now, if you're using XFCE4, you would just simply have to comment out this line, and Start X will actually run that instead of the test environment. So we're going to hit Control X to exit, Y to save, and enter to quit, and there we go. Alright, before I start Awesome, I'm going to download some themes from the AUR. So I'm going to use Yaourt to search because I like the uh, text coloring it does. We're going to search for Awesome Themes. And there it is, number one. So I'm going to hit Control C to exit and run Packer to download it. Awesome Themes. GIT, hit enter, typo, excellent, so in order to access these themes, uh, we're going to have to copy them from the directory they were downloaded to into our into a new directory we're going to create in our home folder. So to start, we're going to make a directory, actually the p-switch, in order to create both a config directory, a hidden config directory, an awesome directory, and a themes directory. So now if we do an ls with an a switch on our home directory, you'll see that config exists as well as awesome, and finally themes. Granted, they're all empty, but they won't be for long. So, the way awesome is set up, the way you configure awesome is through a couple files, RC Lua and Themes Lua. But first, they have to also be copied into a set of folders that we just created. The RC Lua file is located in Etsy, XDG, Awesome, and then RC Lua. We're going to copy this to our home directory, config, awesome. Just the root of the awesome folder. So now if we do an ls of config awesome, you'll see RC Lua is now in there. Now let's copy over the themes into that themes directory we just created. 
these themes are, uh, have been downloaded into I'm going to use the R switch so that it copies recursively as well and we're going to grab them from user share awesome themes we're going to use the star wildcard to signify that we want everything in that folder copied and we're going to throw these into config awesome themes so now if we run an ls of the themes directory we made all those themes have now been copied over so now how do we get awesome to load one of these themes well we have to go into that RC Lua file that we copied over a little bit of earlier. So let's nano into it. sudo nano config awesome RC Lua. For right now, we're just concerned um, down here under beautiful dot init. And we're going to change this entire part. And delete it out. So in here we're going to type awful.util.getdir open parenthesis, open quote, config, close quotation, close parenthesis, space, dot, dot, space, whack themes, Whack default and theme Lua. Close quotation mark. So basically, we're telling this to go to that config awesome themes directory that we created, and you're going to you can change this default part to whatever folder of whatever theme you want to use. So for example, I like the Arch theme the most, so I'll be putting Arch here. Anyway, I'm going to hit Control X here, Y to save, and enter to quit. And now that that is loaded, we can finally use Start X to start our graphical user interface. So guys, that's how you install a graphical user interface in Arch Linux. I hope you found this tutorial informative and helpful, and I'll catch you guys next time.